I have a sense of perfectionism that can never be satisfied and it prevents me from authentically connecting to others and and also at the same time having like empowering boundaries within that so it's kind of complex I was concerned that I wouldn't pick because I kind of have a lot to choose from as far as my issues go and I was concerned that I wouldn't pick the right one or I wouldn't pick the one that would make the biggest impact like I wanted to kind of get the the best the biggest one out of the way today and I was nervous I would pick the wrong one well it was really trippy one thing that was really neat was just trusting the process so like you know I, I would get in my head a little bit but then there was always an answer and so it was really neat to kind of have the memories revealed to me it was really nice because I felt safe to kind of explore in the muddy terrain that your memories can be um, and it was neat how like all of a sudden I'd be like oh wait there's this memory coming up and how they were connected even though they didn't really seem one of the things that was really interesting of course, it, it makes sense that I have an issue with perfectionism or being good enough. Um, you know, the one of the first memories that came up was my mom saying, do you want to trade to another couple with their son? And that feeling of being, uh, number one, replaceable, and then number two, like, well, proving my worth because they didn't trade. So I've, I've got to be the best or I've got to be better. I've got to be special in order to be loved um, by not being traded. And so, and that was really interesting because when that happened, I was like three years old. And so it's interesting how like something my mother said, obviously with a sense of humor, I took very literal and how that can control so much of how I interpreted events, you know, from three on. The way that that memory has impacted my life today is, um, just a feeling that I don't really belong to my family or a feeling that, um, that I'm not what my family wanted, um, that I'm, that I have to live up to someone else essentially to have my place. Um, and just, and, and that I don't belong kind of, or that I'm not wanted. And that's definitely impacted my life present day for sure. Especially like I've realized that there's always been kind of a distrust in my relationships with my parents. And it's like, oh, okay, well that makes sense. Cause you know, the little things or little memories that you take, you really take to heart and they form kind of a, a lens that you see the world through and that you filter your experiences through. And it's quite primitive, but it makes sense, you know. And so to go back as an adult with what I've learned through life and tell that that fractured part of myself this other reality, it is very healing. Another scene that we went back to um, was me at Taco Bell with my dad and my brothers. And I was about 13 or 4. I was 14. And I really wanted to eat Taco Bell. I wanted to go to town, uh, but I also wanted to be thin. And I didn't understand at that point in my life for some reason um, about dieting or health or calories. I didn't really get it. I just knew I shouldn't eat the Taco Bell, but I really wanted it. And I asked my dad if I looked fat. And my dad answered honestly, basically saying, well, you're not fat, but you, could, you, you look like you put on a little weight. You could lose some. And it freaked me out so bad that my dad saw me that way. Um, and, and that's where part of that anxiety over wanting to look perfect to other people. Like I didn't want other people to see my flaws. Um, and, and it, it totally tied in, in a strange way to the feelings of trust and whatever. And, and what I can equate from it from this session is that now, knowing what I know, I can talk to that part of myself. And as long as I feel okay, I don't need to be in control of everyone else's perception. It's really about mine. Get away from the session. What I'm taking away from this session is that, um, that I am in control of parenting that part of myself. 
and that as long as I'm a responsible parent to that part of myself, I can be more open to others. I can choose to trust, but also I'm not so vulnerable. Like, yes, people can still hurt me, but I'm not as vulnerable at such a um, defenseless level, you know, that I'm capable of taking care of myself and I can see, I can just, I and not create situations because sometimes your fear will create a situation that puts you in that exact thing. And now I can kind of see through that and I, I know that I can protect myself and that I can handle it. Oh, so in the middle of this session, I started to get this feeling um, like I was growing larger, like my reality was becoming larger. It was really weird. I could physically feel it. And and I, I'm guessing what that was, was like the integration of that part of myself into my present. And um, so I feel, I kind of feel like reality is not as real, but in a really good way. And um, I kind of feel, I feel less fearful and more um, kind of curious and um, more confident, but it's not the way that I think I would used to try to feel confident, which was, I guess, fake and kind of from more of an ego place. I feel more of like a vulnerable confident because I feel safer to be vulnerable now.